Hi there everyone, Bruno Luce here with GLB Productions. Welcome back. In this episode of GLB TV, I'm going to show you how to set up an external effects processor like this one here. Now, an external effects processor is an external, usually rack mounted but not always unit, that allows you to add reverb, delay, chorus, and similar effects to your mix. Now, in this context, we are talking about live sound. The way that you set up an effects unit for live sound is similar but not exactly the same as how you'd set up for recording. So please bear in mind as we go through that example. The other thing is, this happens to be a Lexicon MPX 550. Now, we're not going to go into the details of the unit because what I want to focus on is how you connect and get the unit working. There are lots of these rack mount effects, some of them from Yamaha, from Alessis or TC Electronic, among others. So hopefully what you learn in this video will be applicable to all of these rack mount units, whatever type of connectors they use and whatever company they're from. So let's get started. Okay everyone, here's the mixer that we're going to be using for this particular demonstration. If you remember, I said that we're going to focus on how to set up a rack mount effects unit in the live sound context. So what that means is how to set it up to work with a mixer. All right, the mixer that you can see in front of you is a Mackie CFX12 Mark II. And as you can see, it has eight mono channels and two stereo channels. Now, the way that I prefer to set up an external effects unit with a mixer is to patch it in using the aux sense. Now, the reason for that is that if you use the aux sense, every single channel on the mixer can access that effect. Okay, now here we've zoomed in on the channel section of the mixer and in particular we've zoomed in on the aux section of the channel. Now as you can see, this particular mixer has four aux sends. It has two aux sends that are switchable pre or post fader and it has two aux sends that are dedicated post fader. Now this particular mixer has an internal effects processor which we'll cover in another video and that's why you can see here it's labeled effects 1 external effects 2 internal now when connecting an external effects unit I always recommend using a post fader auxiliary send in other words when you adjust the channel fader the level of the aux tracks along with it the reason for this, as I'll show you later, is that when you fade out the channel, you want the effect to fade out along with it. You don't want the channel signal to go away, but the effect to carry on. It doesn't sound natural in live sound. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to locate the external effects send jack on the mixer. Now here we are looking at the top right corner of the mixer and if I zoom in slowly you will see you have aux 1 and 2. Now these are the two aux sends that can be pre or post fader and up here you can see effect send 1 and 2. Now as you remember effect send 1 is designed for an external effects unit Effect send 2 is the send to the internal processor. Now the reason they give you an output is that they want you to be able to use two external processors if necessary. If you plug something in here, it will bypass the internal effects processor. Now, before we connect anything up, I need to say that what we're doing is we are taking the signal from here routing it through the effects unit and then returning it to the mixer okay now the way that we're going to do this is with normal guitar cables 
You can use what are called TRS or uh, balance cables. You can see one here. But ordinary guitar cables will work just fine. Now the reason for that is that the distances involved here are extremely small. We're going probably 30 centimeters down to the effects unit and we're coming another 30 centimeters back. Generally speaking, unbalanced lines are good for at least 3 meters or 15 feet before you start to have noise problems. Let's review the cables that you're going to need. When we connect this effects unit, we are going to go to the effects unit in mono and return in stereo. The reason we're going in mono is that most of our sources in live sound are mono, all right? You do have exceptions like stereo keyboards and drum overheads, but majority, for example, vocals, guitar, bass, snare drum are mono. So to keep things simple, we will go there in mono and return in stereo. So you will need three normal guitar, uh, guitar chords, all right? As I said before, these are unbalanced. You can also use balanced if you desire, all right? But for these short distances, unbalanced is fine. Step one is to connect one of our guitar chords to effects send one, right? Remember, we're using effects send one. Now we'll spin the rack around and look at the back of the effects unit. Hey, okay, now as you look into the back of the rack, I think you can appreciate how tight it is in here. The back of the effects unit is right here, all right, in the middle of your screen. If you look at the right side of the effects unit, you will see the input and output section. And you can see that we have two analog inputs and two analog outputs. Now what that means is that if you choose, you can go into the effects unit in stereo and come out in stereo. But for this demonstration, as I said, we're going to go in mono and come out stereo. So we take our guitar cable that we plugged into effects one send and we connect it to the left input channel now on something like this do you connect to left or right well generally speaking the effect will default to mono if it only sees that one is connected so for simplicity we choose the left connector now if you have small hands this is probably easier than if you have big ones, but anyway, get one of your roadies with small hands to do it. So our wiring from the mixer to the effects unit is now complete. We now take our two remaining guitar cables and connect them to the output connectors. Now you can see that this effects unit has XLR in and out. A lot of effects units will not, and if they don't, you're fine. Just use normal guitar cables. So I'm going to connect one to the left, move this out of the way, one to the left, and one to the right. There we go. So now we've got these two here, which we need to plug back into the mixer. So we're now looking at the top of the mixer, looking at the uh, master section and we have our two jack connectors from the rear of the effects unit these are the outputs of the effects unit and we have to connect them to the mixer now you have two choices when it comes to this you can connect to the stereo effects returns or you can connect them to a normal stereo channel now when it comes to live sound my recommendation is that you connect to a normal stereo channel and the reason for this is that it makes managing your effects return much simpler you have your effects on a fader instead of a knob you have eq that you can apply to your effects and you have full routing of your effects in the event that you want to send them to a monitor send or to one of the musicians. So that's what we're gonna do in this case, all right? So we're gonna use our last stereo channel here, 
and we're going to plug in left and right. Now that completes the connection of the effects unit back to the mixer. So let's recap. This cable here is the signal from the mixer to the effects unit that is also called the dry signal. These two cables here are the signal from the effects unit back into the mixer. This is known as the wet signal. Now that we've connected up our effects unit, we have to send signal there and then take signal back from the effects unit. So, how do we send signal from the mixer to the effects unit? For the purposes of this demonstration, I've plugged a microphone in here, all right, so that will be our source. You can see down here, if I zoom in a little bit, on the channels that you want to send to the effects unit, turn up the relevant aux send. I usually turn it to unity gain, but your settings will vary from mixer to mixer. The second thing that you have to do is you have to make sure that the master for that effect send is turned up. So can you see here, this is in the master section, you have aux1 and aux2 masters. Here you have effects1 external master control. Make sure that that is also turned up to unity gain. So you've got to turn up the channel send and you have to turn up the master send for that effects bus. Now that we have connected our effects unit, which is this guy in the middle here, first thing we got to do obviously is we have to switch it on. Now when you do this, remember that the output of this unit is connected to your mixer. So make sure that the channel fader on that particular channel is down all the way. We have our power switch here. Some of them will have the power switch on the back. Some of them it will be, there will be no power switch at all and you just plug the unit in and switch it on. Okay, now as you can see, the unit has booted up and it says on the front panel, U8 vocal plate one. Now, all of these units, they have all kinds of different names for what sort of effects that they use. This happens to be a plate reverb. If you scroll through the programs, you'll see that it has different names. So let's go, um, on this particular one, when you push in the bank changes, so you can see there, one through 10 are plate reverbs. Then we have some hall reverbs, uh, chamber reverbs, so on and so on, all right? So generally speaking, if you, now what happened there was because I didn't confirm my setting, it went back to the original. Now, in order to understand what the, what the various presets actually do, you'll need to read the manual for your exact effects unit, okay? Um, but generally speaking, what you do is you load up a preset and you have to press load or, or sync or something like that before it will load. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to load up a whole reverb. Just push all of these. Okay, there. All right. So let's, let's try this one. Now the reason I've chosen large hall is that it will be really, really obvious when I actually bring the effect in so you'll be able to hear it. Okay, now that we've chosen the preset that we want, we need to make sure that there is actually signal going to the effects unit itself. The effects unit is a gain stage. And as you can see over here on the left side, you have a knob that says input trim. Now, because the effects unit is expecting a line level signal from the mixer, it's usually safe to leave this around 12 o'clock. If you find that the mixer overloads, then you'll need to either reduce this or reduce the channel send on your mixer. So going back to the screen, you'll see here we have two um, meters. This, these meters indicate the incoming signal to the effects unit. I have a microphone here that I have plugged in to the channel that I showed you just now and I'm going to speak into this microphone. 
check one two now as you can see there you can see there is signal so we are half the way there we have signal coming into the unit itself now you want to make sure that the the unit itself is not overloading okay this is healthy if you saw something like this that might be a little bit high if you see something like this that might be a little bit low right what I've done there is I've just turned the input trim all the way up and all the way down so we'll just leave it at about the 12 o'clock position okay now what we have to do is we have to go back to the mixer and bring that wet signal into the mixer itself let's go okay here we are once again looking at the top of the mixer you are now listening to the output of the mixer going directly into the video camera because I'll need that in order to demonstrate the effects or rather the sound of the effect now let's recap our setup because it can be very confusing if you're doing this for the first time I have a vocal mic connected to this channel here I have raised the channel send to effects 1 I have also raised the effects 1 master send in the master section I have raised the channel fader on the channel that my mic is plugged into the reason I've done this is that this is a post fade effect send so in order for signal to go out the fader has to be up if I pull the fader down you can hear that the sound goes away the lexicon effects unit is connected to the output of this bus the output of the lexicon is coming back through this channel the second stereo channel now if we hooked everything up correctly the only thing we'll have to do now is that we will need to set gain on this channel that's done in the standard way by pressing PFL and by turning up the gain until we see some signal here now when it comes to effects returns in live sound we don't need that much generally what I'll tell people is, is if you can hear the effect it's too much so go easy on the gain all right as long as you can see something is coming into the channel you'll generally be okay and on a line level channel that will typically be somewhere around 11 or 12 o'clock okay so here we go I'm gonna press PFL and then I'm going to raise the gain on the channel now watch watch the lights check one two 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 check one two one two two right now I've I've already got some signals so I'm gonna stop there right note the gain is around one o'clock I'm gonna release the PFL as I raise the channel fader you'll hear the effect come in check one two check one two and there is our beautiful large hall reverb okay now the reason for having the effect come back in on a channel should be obvious if I want more reverb I just bring the fader up further less reverb I just bring it down if I want to mute my reverb I can there or unmute my reverb as necessary all right so that is how you set up an external effects processor configuring it such that the return is on a channel this is my preferred method for live sound use now sometimes you won't have the luxury of being able to return your effects on a channel say you have a band in which somebody is playing four stereo keyboards and all your stereo channels on your mixer are used up in this case you can return the effect to a stereo effects return now if you look at this mixer up here hiding behind all of these let me unplug from the stereo channel you can see it says stereo effects return effects returns are essentially line level channels with no EQ 
very, very limited routing and usually no fader. They just have a knob. So you lose all the ability to EQ your effects send as well as in many cases you can't send your effects to the monitors. But if you're out of input channels, that may be your only option. So we take the outputs from our lexicon effects processor and we connect them here. All right. We now have to hunt in the master section for the knob that controls the, uh, the signal there. And as you can see, it's here. Now, I'm afraid that you can't see the labeling because it's hidden by this knob, but this actually says effects one return. So when you turn this up, once again, you'll hear our hall reverb. Now, of course, the disadvantage of this is that you can't send your reverb to the monitors, and you can't EQ your reverb, and you don't have much control over the gain structure of what's coming back in. It's fixed at line level. But in a pinch, that's what you got to use. Effects returns. One of the questions that I get commonly asked is, how do I send my effects to the monitors. Typically, musicians, especially singers, will want to hear a lot of reverb. It's sort of like a security blanket for singers. It helps them with their pitching, and it makes them sound good, sometimes better than they really are. Now, remember, when you return your effects into a channel, you treat this just like any other signal. So sending it to the monitors is as simple as raising the aux send, the relevant aux send, on that channel. So say this is the aux which is going to the singer's monitor. They want more reverb, you just bring it up. If they want less reverb, you bring it down. Simple as that. The other question that I get asked a lot is, why do we use post-fade effect sends for effects? The reason is this. When you fade the dry signal out, you want the effect to fade out along with it. Otherwise, it can sound really, really unnatural. Let me demonstrate how this works. This is our setup, right? I will unmute, there's our reverb. Now note, when I fade the channel out, the reverb fades out along with it. Check one, two, check one. Okay? So you can hear there that it went to complete silence. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap the send to a pre-fade aux send. I'm going to unplug from this, and I'm going to plug it into aux 1. Okay, turn up master control, and on my mic channel, I've got this turned up as well. Now, if I unmute the... You can hear, first of all, there's a lot more reverb. Note what happens when I bring down the source channel fader. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Now what happened there was that as I faded this out, you were left with only the wet signal. Did you notice that? Show you one more time, unmute my effects. Check one, two, check one, two. And if you're left with only the wet signal, sometimes you can really get quite disconcerted. So the reason we use post-fade aux sends for effects is that when we fade the channel out, we want the reverb to fade out along with it. Okay everyone, so that concludes our video on how to hook up an external effects processor. Do feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Remember, this is not a simple process if you're doing it for the first time. It's very, very easy to get mixed up between your source and destination and all of the inputs and outputs that we have to deal with. Just remember, use post-fade auxiliary sense and return your effects to a normal channel if possible. It will make your life much, much easier. This is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.